I've tried a lot of different AI image generators, but for me, Midjourney provides the most aesthetically pleasing artistic output. And I spent the last week improving my prompt engineering so that I can get better output images. In this video, I'm going to discuss how to put together effective prompts for Midjourney specifically, and go through some of the creative styles that you can use with this tool. In contrast to ChatGPT, which fries in a lot of data, with Journey, there's a benefit to keeping your prompts concise and condensed to just two or three topics. Now, what I like to do is break a prompt into four parts. The first part will focus on the foreground or the, the main description of the image and what you're trying to create. The second part will describe the background. I use, generally use kind of plain English terms for this. Then I'll create a list of styles that I want to add. The styles can be comma separated and it'll be things like cyberpunk, Unreal Engine, um, volumetric lighting. You add all these different kind of style guides to describe how you want Midjourney to create that image and kind of what effects you want to lay over the top. The final thing you add are the flags, which provide additional functionality to the Midjourney program itself, such as defining the aspect ratio, whether you're on a portrait or a landscape uh, image and also things like stylize, which can kind of give Midjourney more artistic license over the image it's creating. There's a complete list of flags in the user manual from Midjourney at midjourney.gitbook.io. I've compiled the ones that I use the most here. This minus minus V sets a specific version of Midjourney to use, where I'm currently on new version four and that's been made default now, so I don't use this as much. But when they come out of a new version, you sometimes have to specify that specifically because it's not the default. Aspect ratio, we've actually been limited to either 3, 2 or 2, 3. By standard, it's just square. So if you leave this blank, it will come up as a square image. 3, 2 is landscape and 2, 3 is portrait. Stylize defines how much beauty Midjourney should add to make the image more aesthetically pleasing. You might have noticed that Midjourney makes these sometimes really or drop in images which are very kind of epic and they've got very good, like pleasant lighting and it's almost a bit too much sometimes. So you can either turn that down or increase it using this command. Minus minus Q defines the quality, so we set this to two, and I think this basically increases the iterations that Midjourney does to try and find a pleasing output. And by setting this to two, you're basically going to double the cost in terms of the credits and time it takes to create that image. Minus minus video is actually a way that you can get a video output from the creation of the image. So the kind of the layers building up, it will send you a video of that if you send it a um, mail emoji. The minus minus uplay is one that when you're upscaling the image, it adds more detail. And sometimes this isn't exactly, like, it makes the image different to the original concept. So you can use uplight to scale it up without adding increased detail to the base image. Now let's look at some of the styles. I'm going to go through these quickly and then we'll look at some of them in actual images. So painting, drawing, sketch, oil on canvas, graffiti, watercolor painting, ink, pencil art, charcoal art, masterpiece, manga, hyper-realistic, cartoon, Unreal Engine, Vector, vintage photo, black and white, sepia tone, Pixar, um, cinematic lighting, volumetric lighting, vignette, minimalist, cyberpunk, 8K, octane render, 32-bit isometric, 16-bit adventure game, phantasmal light in iridescent, and diagrammatic drawing. So these are um, a personal selection of the ones that I like to use. There's, you can get creative. This, this isn't a complete list by any means. Um, but these are the ones I found really useful in adding to the end of the prompt to define what the kind of style you want the image to be. Do you want it to be a black and white drawing or do you want it to be a very realistic photo or a cartoon similar to something out of like a Pixar movie? You can also define an artist and I've gone through some of the artists that I like and I found useful for using with the prompt. You can see here on the blog post there's all the different kind of artists and notice that a lot of these are kind of watercolor type paintings so define an art style rather than the image itself so some of the uh the different artistic qualities can be quite similar and something like salvador dali really kind of is an exception to that where it creates a really abstract image for you now let's go through some prompts so we've got here a mechanical drawing of a robot on faded paper artistic vintage we set an aspect ratio of three two and a quality of two I think that drawing things like robots are a great use for Midjourney because there's not a specific way that you expect it to look. So it can get creative. It can kind of draw things that it imagines or that other people have imagined that it's kind of basing its results on. And it can come up with some really excellent examples of this. Here we have an imagine an old woman standing in a field in front of a futuristic city of skyscrapers in the background of a stormy sky, post-apocalyptic, unreal engine, hyper-realistic, 8K, cinematic lighting, aspect ratio of 3 to 2 and a quality of 2 again. 
You can see you've got this old lady standing in front of this like futuristic city. Imagine a glass globe of the world hanging in space with the sun shining through it and light reflecting off into the background of stars and galaxies. Detailed 8K artistic with lens flare and an aspect ratio of 3 to 2. You can see here the images from Mid Journey are really aesthetically pleasing. If we compare this to, say, Dali with the same prompt, the difference is absolute night and day. And what it can create is actually really beautiful. If we look at this drawing, Imagine an old-fashioned horse and car going down a cobbled Victorian street in London in the year 1900. Volumetric lighting, charcoal art, black and white, with an aspect ratio of 3 to 2. I spent the rest of my life learning to draw and probably still not have the artistic talent to come up with something like this, to be able to create this with a pen and paper or a pencil and paper. Midjourney is an incredible tool and learning how to use it and build these prompts and creating your own styles is going to be a massive opportunity for people that are creating content in the future. Here's another one. Imagine a racing car melting in the desert surrounded by men on horses looking at the driver in a style of Salvador Dali, Mexico, cliffs, cactus, sepia tone, vignette. We've got this almost like abstract, modern art, wild west photo. It's combined a lot of different styles here, but again, it's kept it aesthetically pleasing. And there's, there's something almost beautiful about the content that Midjourney creates. And the way I think they do this is they train the models based on the images that you're telling them that you want to upscale. So if you want to upscale it, it's giving like a plus one to that image. And it's learning by, from that how to create better and better images. And what's amazing is that it's only going to improve over time, especially in the next iteration where we've had this explosion in the use of AI tools recently that it's going to give them so much more data to work with. Now let's look at a slightly more advanced prompt. I'm in Discord here. I've got an account set up so I can use the direct messages. I'm going to do Imagine, and then I'm going to do a futuristic Lamborghini in the middle of a stadium. I'm going to set specific weights for two items. I want it to look more like a rock concert. So I'm doing rock concert dot dot 1.25, and then football minus 0.75. This tells me journey that I'm looking for a background of more of a rock concert that going on in a stadium rather than a stadium kind of that's got a football game going on. I'm then specifying spotlights in, Unreal Engine, which is the kind of styles that I want to, this to look like, and I set an aspect ratio of 3-2. Let's go ahead and put that through and see what it comes up with. Let's open these up. We've got some pretty smart cars there. You can see that the kind of the feel of what we've got is closer to what's kind of going on with a rock concert rather than a daytime football game. And that's what I wanted. It hasn't really nailed the stadium, maybe kind of the indoor stadium, I guess, which is again more familiar with a rock concert rather than a kind of an open stadium for a football game. It wasn't exactly what I was looking for, but the, the spotlighting and everything that's going on with it is a really kind of impressive reflection of what um, this tool can do. One thing to note is if you ever if you ever try and copy it on these images and you get a WebP file, it just means the image hasn't finished processing yet. If you wait a little bit longer, you will get a ping image at the end. Let's upscale number four. One of the things I think is really useful in Mid Journey is creating these brand styles. You can come up with a prompt, whether that be kind of artistic charcoal art drawings or futuristic Unreal Engine prompts, and you can kind of create this these images for whatever you want with a subset brand style that you've already defined. So for your brand, you might say you want cartoon style images in a Pixar format, and then you can add these styles to the end of every prompt that you're doing, and all the images that you're kind of creating for the content that you're putting out there will follow this same kind of brand style, and I think that's a really useful marketing tool. Now look at this for artistic style. We have a futuristic Lamborghini at a rock concert in the middle of a stadium with spotlighting. I think the main challenge with mid-journey is finding the style that suits you and your needs. If you can kind of describe how you want the image to look and what style or what artist you want it to kind of represent, then it's much easier to kind of take a base image or kind of the actual object that you're describing and then use the styles that you've predefined to create the image that's aesthetically pleasing to what you're looking for. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about AI, then my channel is almost certainly not the one to follow. Feel free to check out my other video on ChatGPT prompt engineering. Thank you for watching.